Ken here again with you with lesson three, part three, capacitive reactants. So we've just seen in the previous um, part of lesson three, the capacitors store and release energy causing a phase shift. But they also create a thing called reactants. So this reactants creates opposition to current flow. So capacitive reactance is the opposition to current flow in a purely capacitive AC circuit. And the term we use is capacitive reactance. And it is measured in ohms. It's measured in ohms because it is what I would call the AC resistive value. Now the resistive value is a little bit dynamic because it also relates to the frequency. So the symbol for reactance is a capital or uppercase X. So capacitive reactance is an uppercase X with a subscript C to indicate that we're talking about reactance, but it's a capacitive reactance. So how do we go about calculating capacitive reactance? So the equation to find XC, capacitive reactance, for only for a sine wave, by the way, is capacitive reactance XC equals 1 divided by 2 pi FC. 2 pi is a constant, F is the frequency, C is the capacitance in farads. So it's important to remember that XC, our capacitive reactance is in ohms, 2 pi is a constant, and the close approximation of that is 6.28. F is our frequency in hertz, and our capacitance is in farads. Quite often our capacitors are often, that we use, are in microfarads, so we've got to remember to use our 10 to the minus 6 to allow for microfarads. So I want you to find that formula on your formula sheet. Pause the video here. Make sure you know where to find that formula. For well, that is the formula for capacitive reactants XC equals 1 on 2 pi FC. And the answer is always in ohms. So let's look at a couple of quick examples. And again, I'd uh, encourage you to pause the video and have a go at writing these out yourself. So here we want to find the capacitive reactance of a 100 microfarad capacitor. There's that micro I was talking about. 100 microfarad capacitor at a frequency of, we've got to do it twice, once at 50 hertz, once at 1 kilohertz, or at 1,000 hertz. So let's do the equation at 50 hertz. We know that XC equals 1 on 2 pi FC. So our 1 is going to be divided by 6.28, multiplied by our frequency, multiplied by our 100 farads, microfarads times 10 to the minus 6. So punch that into your calculator and make sure you get 31.85 ohms. And I've, they've put in brackets here at 50 hertz, because as you, I mentioned before, this will actually change depending on the frequency. And you'll see this in the next exercise. So let's let's have a look, quick look at the next exercise. We're now going to do it at 1 kilohertz. So the formula remains the same. XC equals 1 divided by 2 pi FC. So 6.28 now multiplied by a thousand rather than 50 multiplied by 100 times 10 to the minus 6 for our 100 microfarads. And what do you see? Our capacitive reactance or our AC resistance has dropped to 1.59 ohms at 1 kilohertz. So you can see capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to frequency. The higher the frequency goes, the lower the capacitive reactance will become. So in this example, example two, we're going to find the capacitive reactance of a 0.22 microfarad capacitor at a frequency of 50 hertz and at one kilohertz. So again, 
we're just doing it again with a couple of different values. So this time, 1 on 2 pi FC, we're going to get 6.28 times 50 times 0.222 times 10 to the minus 6. And look at this, 144,800 ohms. So as our capacitor has got smaller at 50 hertz, our capacity of reactants has increased. And finally, at 1 kilohertz, we punch the numbers in, and at 1 kilohertz, of course, we've come down to 7,240 ohms, or 7.24 kilo ohms at 1 hertz. So you can see the capacitance and the frequency have a substantial effect on the reactance value. So capacity of reactants and Ohm's law. To find the current in a purely capacitive AC circuit, we can use Ohm's law. The reactance or the resistance R is replaced with the value of XC. So we have our formula down here, I equals V on XC. In Ohm's law, that would have been I equals V on R. So we're simply replacing our R with our XC because it is the AC resistive value, as long as the frequency doesn't change. Transposing it, we can also say XC is equal to the voltage divided by the current, and we can also say the voltage is equal to the current times the reactance XC. So here's a quick little example we can work through together. We have 230 volts, 50 hertz. We want to find out the current. We have a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. I'd suggest you pause the video here and see if you can work out what the, capac what the capacitive reactance is and what the current in the circuit is. See if you can work those two things out. So pause the video here. And then, once you've done the calc yourself, see if it comes out the same as what I have on the video. So how did we go? XC would have been 1 on 2 pi FC, so we would have had 1 divided by 6.28 multiplied by 50 multiplied by 0.1 times 10 to the minus 6 we would have ended up with an XC of 31.85 kilo ohms. A reasonably large reactance. And of course, the current I equals V divided by XC. So 230, 230 volts, I should say, divided by 31.85 times 10 to the 3, because it's kilo ohms, means that this circuit would have 7.2 milliamps flowing in the circuit. So what about capacitive reactances in parallel? The total capacitance of a circuit increases as more capacitors are connected in parallel. The plate area keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This means that the capacitive reactance decreases with each additional capacitor. This is like parallel resistive circuit in which adding another resistance in parallel reduces the resistance. Therefore, the equations to find total capacitive reactance are similar to those for parallel resistors. So total capacitance, the circuit increases as more capacitors are connected in parallel. This means that the capacitive reactance decreases with each additional capacitor. This is like putting parallel resistive circuits together. Therefore, the equation for finding total capacitive reactance is very similar to that for parallel resistors. So here it is, equations for XC in parallel. So XC total are equal to 1 on 1 on C1 plus 1 on C2 plus 1 on C3 so on and so forth. Or you might be used to seeing it written this way, 
1 on xc total equals 1 on c1 plus 1 on c2 plus 1 on c3. You add them all up, but you've got to inverse them back again to get ct itself. If you only have two values, you can abridge the formula to this one, where you have xc times xc2 divided by xc1 plus xc2 will get you to the same place, but only works for two reactances in parallel. Again, here's a little example of capacitors in parallel. In this particular case, we've got a 400 volt supply at 50 hertz. C1 is a capacitor with 1.89 amps flowing in it. C2 has 1.26 amps. So for this circuit, we want to calculate the capacitive reactance of C1, C2, calculate the total capacitive reactance of the circuit and calculate the total current. And draw a phasor diagram that represents what's happening. So our first step in the solution is to calculate the capacitive reactance C1. So we know that Xc also equals the voltage divided by the current as long as it's only the current for that leg. So 400 volts divided by 1.8, that's this capacitor here, is going to give us 211.64 ohms. So we now know the capacitive reactance in the first capacitor in C1 is 211 ohms. Again, just being able to use Ohm's law for the capacitive reactance. Part two, we need to calculate the second capacitor, same process, 400 volts, this time divided by 1.26. So 400 divided by 1.26, and we have 317 volts. Calculate the total capacitive reactance. So we have two reactances, 211 ohms, 317. We're going to use the shortcut formula here and say C1 times C2 divided by C1 plus C2 gives us 211 times 317 divided by 211 plus 317 gives us an overall reactance of 126.98. I'd happily call that 127 ohms. And part three, to find the total current so total current can be found by adding the individual currents as they are both out of phase with the applied voltage by 90 degrees. So the total current can be found with Ohm's law using values we've already calculated. So we can simply say I total is equal to I1 plus I2, 1.89 plus 1.26 because they're both out of phase by 90 degrees. So our total current is 315 and you can see that here on the circuit on the phasor diagram I should say we've got 1.98 top to tail another 1.26 and we can add them together so we've got a value of 400 volts if we want to know what the overall capacitive reactance is we know that we can uh, we have um, we cal already have calculated that at 126.98 and if we want to just check ourselves divide the voltage by the XC 400 divided by 126.9 comes to 300 and sorry not 315 3.15 amps so able to just double check ourselves proving that we can just add them together because it also works from an ohms law perspective